welcome back, Shalliners. Well, the Kardashians are back in the news, why aren't they not? Because a trailer for their new season has come out, and in it, we see Chloe like weeping <laughs> over Tristan Thompson doing what he does best, which is not basketball, cheating. <laughs> and, you know, she's just like distraught and like, I'm a person and he has no respect for me. And all of us are like, girl, we saw this coming. And it got me to thinking about why guys always cheat on Chloe, you know? And then, of course, why some of us seem to just like always date cheaters or find ourselves just always with douchebags and in toxic relationships. So today we're going to look at that, the mentality that drives that, and basically how we can cheat proof our relationships as best as possible. But first, I want to, <laughs> what do I say? If for <laughs> If you guys have a private question, find me on the Instant Go app and click chat to get connected right away. It's just me. It's no bots. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. And follow me on social media, Insta, Snapchat, and Twitter, at ShallonXO. And click like and subscribe for new videos every Friday and a bunch in between because I have nothing better to do than do this in my life. Okay, so Chloe and Tristan, why do guys always cheat on her? <sighs> the first, I mean, the most obvious answer is, like, well, because they can, you know? A man is only as faithful as his options. This is what my grandmother always told me. And it basically means like if a guy has access to a lot of different tail, it's, I mean, eventually, maybe not eventually, but it's going to be hard to resist. So it's like, Chloe, you date dudes who are famous in their own right, already wanted and beloved by women before they got set up with you. Because dating a celebrity, dating Chloe Kardashian, like, makes a guy more attractive. Like, I don't think girls cared that much about Travis Scott until they started dating Kylie and now his shows are sold out. And like, if you guys are like a Travis Scott stan, like, okay, he's good, whatever. But undeniably, dude has more juice now, right? And like, so did Lamar Odom, James Harden, Tristan Thompson. Like, these guys gained access to a whole new arena of fans because of dating Chloe. But of course, they all cheated on her. They're professional athletes and they travel and traveling means you're in a new city. There's not like much accountability there. I mean, and it's not just basketball players, hockey players do this, baseball, it's rock stars. Heck, even just like run of the mill business dudes who travel a lot for work. A lot of them cheat too. So you're going for somebody who inherently needs a lot of attention. You know, they want to be a celebrity in their own right. They have access to a lot of different chicks who adore them. And most importantly, those guys had at home Khloe Kardashian, who was what? Desperate. Effing desperate. I have said this before about her so many times that it is the biggest and most telling, it's the biggest red flag and most telling thing ever that for literally years, her Instagram bio was, I crave a love so deep the ocean would be jealous. Blah. Like I get like douche chills just saying it. It's so lame but it's very telling because that is exactly what she wanted it wasn't like i want to colonize life on venus i want to cure cancer god forbid they do anything for the rest of the community no she wants love and that is pure desperation and desperation makes it gives you tunnel vision what does that mean picture your house setting on fire you know you have like five minutes to get out you're desperate to get out. And what do you do? Your everything funnels down into a very clear mission, right? You're going to grab the dog, grab your social security card, grab a bag of food, and you're out. You know, desperation is desperation, no matter what the circumstances are. And you act it out pretty much the same way. So Chloe was so desperate for a man. She's just like, a man, he likes me. We're doing it. We're going for it. She didn't have her head on a swivel looking around for red flags because she was desperate. She was desperate to get out of the house fire that is her own self-esteem. She has tried every bad thing she can to fix something internal with external things. Plastic surgery? That ass is not real. Not. Google her going on the Ellen show when Ellen asked her to like act out like and do exercises. She couldn't do a squat. She didn't know what a mountain climber was. That body is not real. It's man-made. Which, fine. I don't care. But don't act like it's... You're just like this workout thing. Plastic surgery, right? Um, fame. That's people think that the more fans I have, the more love I'm gonna feel. It doesn't work like that. And certainly hollow relationships. I don't understand how we got the idea as women that 
when we get a man, he's not a man, he's a self-esteem filler. He's a salve for our emotional wounds. He's gonna love me back to life. I'll be unbroken when I find the right love. No, baby girl, no. I wish, wouldn't that be easy? Because you know what there are in the world? Like 5.6 billion men. That sounds like a great bunch of solutions. 5.6 billion solutions to my problems, amazing. Oh, but actually that's not true. You have to fix yourself inside. We're all looking out there to try to import, to get this like, this, this fix, but actually we manufacture the fix. Think about it like a job. You can go out and get a job. You have to go get a job because you can't print money at home, right? Same with love. You think, oh, I have to go out and get a man because I can't make my own self-esteem. No, you can print your own self-esteem at home. You don't need that. You don't need that man. You don't need a job. If you could print money at home, you wouldn't be out working 40 hours a week, right? Same with love, same with self-esteem. Chloe doesn't get that. So she is forever looking for completion from a man versus compliment. Not like, a, like complimentary angles, like something that goes with her life that is a nice addition, a nice side dish. No, she needs the guy to fix her, to complete her. And I don't think it's an accident that she also, that she likes these basketball players who cheat on her for the same reason their mistresses do. They're famous, they're hot, they've got juice on their own. Everyone else wants them. It's a feather in her cap. She's not going for some like normal dude, like a businessman. No, 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 no. She's not going for someone who will truly worship her because I don't know that she wants that. Her self-esteem her self -esteem is too low. She doesn't feel like she deserves to be worshiped. She's what? Tunnel vision, house fire, desperate. So what can we learn from poor Chloe's continuingly tragic examples? I think the way to cheat proof your relationships is to not need your relationship. My grandmother said to me, you want to find a man, you always want your man to love you just a little bit more than you love him. That's the secret to a happy relationship. And it's true. I want to be adored by my man. I want his attention to be on me. And how do we do that? You have to be mentally stimulating. What does that mean? It means very different things to both the sexes. To a woman, if you ask a girl, what does it mean for a guy to be mentally stimulating? We all kind of say the same thing, right? It seems like an obvious answer. Like, well, he's smart, he's engaging, he's funny, he's got stuff to say, blah, blah, blah. What does it mean to men for a woman to be intellectually, I'm sorry, mentally stimulating? Completely different. She withholds her time. She withholds her time. That's fascinating. And we all say, you know, we all know that's like, you got to play hard to get. I don't play hard to get. I am hard to get. My schedule makes me hard to get. I have a lot of friends. I'm hard to get. Like I prioritize them. I have a hell of a busy job. I travel. I'm just like tired, you know, <laughs> grouchy. And I'm like, I need my alone time. I'm an only child. I need to like be on my own. I have this YouTube channel. Like I don't have time to just let someone into my life seven days a week. My boyfriend and I have been together a year and a half. I, I, and I'm like, just, I, three days a week is enough. And he's like, ah, he's rabid for my attention all the time because I withhold it. And that's not artificial. People can tell when you're running a game on them, you know, consciously or unconsciously, they can smell desperation, right? We can all smell desperation on another person. That's kind of why we don't want to be friends with a loner because they seem desperate and we're like, Ugh. like we're pack animals. We don't like that. And guys can also smell when a girl's kind of, kind of faking it. You know, it's after, because after a while, something that's inauthentic, you just can't keep it up. But it's like, can you speak with a British accent your entire relationship? Probably not. Eventually you're going to slip. It's going to be difficult and time consuming. So you have to actually be busy. You have to actually fill your life with things that give you a sense of purpose. You have to have goals that you're pursuing. You have to have altruistic endeavors that make you realize, hey, I'm more than who I'm dating. Look at everything I'm giving back to this community. Look, I'm helping someone. I'm reading to the blind. I'm doing something useful. I have value beyond who has decided to date me. And I know what you're thinking. Well, doesn't Chloe have that? I guess not. I guess not. It makes me think that everything she does is a means to an end. You know what I mean? Like she wants fame. Like I was saying, 
She wants all these external things, not because they satisfy her, like they make her happy, but because they're a means to an end. She wants that guy. She wants that love. Here's something else people can recognize. When they're just playing a role. I don't think for a second, sorry, it's ice. I don't think for a second that Chloe is super, super in love with these dudes that she's been with. I mean, yes and no. I don't think it's the person, it's the possibilities. Why else would you marry Lamar Odom after a month? I'm not saying you can't commit to him, be madly in love with him, even move in with him. Why did you need to marry him? Were you desperate to be a wife? Ooh, maybe so. Okay. Why else would you forgive Tristan when he cheated on you while you were giving birth to his child? And knowing that he cheated on his last girlfriend with you while she was pregnant. Why would you forgive that? Because it wasn't the person, it was the possibility. He, you you are the star of your play, Chloe, and you are casting a role. You are casting the role of husband. And I think on some level, those guys probably knew that. And maybe they were very susceptible to going out and meeting a girl who actually did connect with them. Now, okay, I don't think that's the case with Chloe and these dudes. I think these dudes are just hound dogs and I don't think they're even bothering to learn the first names of the women they're boning. Don't think it matters to them. But I do think in some of our relationships, it can be like that. If we're desperate to get married or to like have a guy, that's a really hollow relationship, you know? And I don't think it would take much to lure a man's, you know, direction away. Look at the show, The Office. Pam was kind of just filling a role for Roy, her first, her fiance. But then she really connected with Jim and that's who she ended up with. You know, she basically emotionally cheated on Roy with Jim, like obviously. So Chloe liked these guys, like not because of who they were, but because they were going to complete her. They were going to give her what she needed. What she should have given herself is some therapy. Maybe six months alone in the woods in South Dakota. I don't know. She needed to get right with herself before she could find a relationship that's healthy. You can't be half of a whole if you don't know what half you are. And I don't believe Khloe Kardashian knows. And if she does know, I don't think she likes that half. I don't think she likes who she is. <sighs> I mean, it's just, it's a lot to unwrap, but we have to like look at these things and think, okay, how can this relate to my life? If you find yourself always dating cheaters, always dating abusive guys, always dating toxic people, guess who the always there is? It's not them. The always is you. You are the always. You are the common denominator. You are the thing that is present in all of these scenarios, right? And that's the gift and the curse. Like, I, I know you're like, oh, I feel so attacked. I know. I mean, I've, I believe me, I've had like therapist friends be like, hey, you know what keeps happening? You, <laughs> you know, like, we all have to confront this, that we are the architect of our own misfortune nine times out of 10. But the gift and the curse is we're our own problem. But hey, who on planet Earth can you fix? Just yourself. Just yourself. Not a guy, not a parent, not your sister, not your best friend. You. So that's great that I'm the problem. I mean, really, because I, ha I have 100% control over my behavior. But like I always say, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So if you're not acknowledging your role in creating these scenarios, I mean, even if you are doing exactly what I said, you've got a life, you've got friends, you've got a busy schedule, like you are hard to get. And guys just keep, you keep just meeting douchebags. I guarantee you there's a house fire mentality there. There is things, there are things you are choosing not to see in your desperation to run out of some emotional scenario and into the arms of a man. You, it is up to you to analyze what that might be. But I guarantee if you ask your friends and family, your inner circle, they will have some ideas. I mean, I'm glad you guys come to me for your questions. You know, I love it. And it's really good to get an outside perspective. A lot of times like I kind of like pull back and see the forest for the trees, but I mean, I don't think we utilize our inner circle enough as um, like emotional monitoring. If you ask your friends, if you sat them down and be like, why do you guys think I keep having the same experiences with guys? I guarantee they've got some theories. It's just a matter of 
am I willing to hear this? Because like I said, no one wants to be the villain in our own story. It's embarrassing and it sucks. And it's like, ugh, no, I would much prefer to have guys. I hate men, hashtag men suck, whatever, men are trash. Men are trash. But like, maybe I'm trash too. And maybe I need to clean house a little bit. And maybe I need to take some responsibility for my own behavior and ask myself, what emotional payout am I getting from constantly getting into these situations? Do I like playing the victim? Do I get to be the center of attention with my friends because, oh, oh, Shallon's relationship went belly up again, another cheater. Do I kind of enjoy unraveling the mystery of like catching him cheating? Maybe I should write mystery novels. Maybe I should join like an amateur sleuthing club. Maybe I should do something healthier with that need. Get to the root of what, what psychological itch that's scratching. Because if it keeps happening, it's scratching something. There is something familiar and recurring about this for a reason. Get to the root of it, pull that out, and, and satisfy that itch in a way that's healthy. Whatever our itches are, we can satisfy them in a healthy way. Khloe Kardashian, I don't think, has ever bothered to do this work. I, I think she said she was like in therapy with Lamar, but that's the thing. She was in therapy with Lamar in service of that relationship. She wasn't in therapy to fix herself, to get some perspective, to be like, no. And the saddest part is like when you hear her talk about things, like she does sound so aware and so woke and you're like, oh, it's like, that's why we root for her. Cause it's like, she seems to know better. And yet, and yet, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't understand when being single became the ultimate boogeyman for women. What, when did, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a husband, become the absolute worst words you can possibly utter. Why? Are we really that afraid of sitting alone with our self? I like myself. I like being by myself. I'm an only child. I need to be alone. I'm almost never lonely. And so that I think gives me a leg up in dating because it's like, I love you, but I don't need you. And if, if we broke up, like I'd be sad, but I would also love again. So don't act up. And that kind of like that vibe translates and guys know that. And I, they either can't rise to that occasion from the get go. And it's like, great, weed yourself out. I don't care. Or they, it keep, kind of keeps them on their toes because I'm just a little, just a little pulled back. I don't have the house fire mentality. I have a broader spectrum of emotional vision and my head is on a swivel for red flags. And if I see them, I'm out right? Because like I said, how many millions, billions of men are on the earth? Several. For us to convince ourselves that like, no, 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 no. It has to be this one. This one. It's not about this one, right? And I know that sounds ironic. It's like, well, of course it is. I have to have him. I have to have this guy. No, you have to stay locked into this position. It's giving you some emotional payout. And that you think this man is going to save you from something. You can fix him so you don't have to fix yourself. Isn't that easier? Yeah. That's what Chloe does. You know, she gets these guys who are like broken in some way because she doesn't want to work on herself because it seems scary. When we start delving into our own trauma and issue and backstory, it feels like we're standing on the edge of a bottomless pit. And it's just like one little poop and in we go and we will never come out. I know. I know. The, the psyche will put up walls and denial and boundaries to keep you from accessing trauma. But it's like digging out a splinter. You know, when you got to get a splinter out, it hurts and you're like, I'm never going to recover from this. It's like the worst thing. But you acknowledge that it's not going to hurt forever. You're like, I'm just, I just got to get it and pull it out. And now it's like, it's hurting, but it's healing. I am hurting in the service of healing. And then it goes away and you feel better. But if you let it sit there, it festers and it just hurts more and more and more and more and more. The mind is the same way. Trauma is the same way. The psyche is the same way. Self-esteem is the same way. So it's better to go to the root. So to, to recap this, ask yourself, what is the common denominator? If you, if you aren't sure, write down on a piece of paper by hand, because we absorb things better when we write it by hand, just the basic outline of your last three or four relationships or crushes. What do they have in common? Ask your friends and family, hey, how do you think I'm playing a role in the outcomes of my relationships? And really listen, 
it might be easier if, if they do it over email. So you can kind of like read it paragraph by paragraph because things we don't want to hear have a way of not really resonating. It's funny. We're just like, oh, no, I'm just going to dodge. <laughs> just dodge that. And then look at how you can scratch that psychological itch in a healthy way. If you need stimulation, if you're bored, get some goddamn hobbies and goals. Okay. They're out there. If you need to like model the relationship your parents had, get yourself into therapy and work that out, right? Go to the root, pull out that splinter, start to heal and move forward with a healthy relationship. For more, click like and subscribe for new videos every Friday and a bunch in between. Follow me on social media at ShallonXO on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And of course, if you have a love question of your own, find me on the Instant Go app and click chat to get connected right away. Yeah.